all and welcome to episode 31 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. And uh, today we have an interesting topic for you, which is nothing to do with management or software and uh, architecture and some of those uh, usual things which we talk about. Today we are going to talk about hardware. And I know a lot of you uh, think that hardware has disappeared from the enterprise. But uh, we have Kumaran and Nishant who are going to help us uh, walk through this, this uh, interesting position in the enterprise where hardware uh, is no longer what it used to be maybe even five years ago. So Kumaran is uh, the chief mentor and CTO for Tiny Magic. And uh, Nishant is, uh, is an architect with the IBS software. So uh, welcome uh, both, uh, Kumar, starting with you. So what, what, what do you think is happening with the hardware in the enterprise? Uh, you have you, seen how the, the server room has disappeared, right? So, but but uh, is that really true? Is that really true? How, how much of it is still existing? I think, no, it's not disappeared. I think it will take another decade to disappear. The server room to disappear will take another decade. Okay. okay. I think uh, one server after another server is slowly defecting to the cloud, but then it's going to take some time. Um, interesting. Yesterday evening, I was talking with somebody and then um, they were doing some kind of a cloud shift and automation. And then a person said, you know, uh, I had a lot of uh, conversation within my org on whether the new workload, which I'm doing, should it be a server on-prem or should it be on Azure? And actually Azure was costly for us in this case. Uh, whereas in an on-prem server, we already had capacity and we could use it. However, I still went ahead with Azure. But uh, luckily with COVID, it actually helped me a lot. Uh, he mm -hmm. said there were other teams who were using on-prem and they had a problem. So I asked him, what problem? He says, no, when you have a server, sometimes it gets reset <laughs> or it shuts down <laughs> okay or something happens in the data center that a cable comes off okay mm -hmm. or there are certain applications with, like let's say even if it's running some applications just run into some problem and you just have to do a reset reset mm -hmm. just kill that process and restart it again so for these things became a huge hassle for them because nobody could actually were coming to the office and it was so difficult, especially during lockdowns. So one of the workarounds, which other company, I mean, like most of the companies kind of did is they say they trained the security folks to operate the data center room, <laughs> bare minimal stuff, right? Like how do you go switch on a server and all and think about it. You have, you're going to give the server admin log into a server, a security guy, and hopefully he doesn't hit the wrong. I mean, maybe yes, he will not do something big with it because he doesn't have the knowledge for it. Okay. Yeah. But think about, it becomes very flaky, right? Mm -hmm. But um, interestingly, okay, so that clearly told me, and this is I heard in multiple sources. It's not just mm -hmm. this company. I would say among enterprises, at least 80% of them have this, had this challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was literally the security guys who are the IT experts. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so this is on the server side. Okay. Then let's slowly come work our ways down. Um, then comes network. Right. Uh, now, we, uh, so interestingly, one of the large companies here, they were working on a work from home long term policy. Mm -hmm. And the first draft proposal is uh, employees need to have uh, three hours of power backup. Okay. And uh, 100 Mbps in their house if they want to work from home. And uh, they should be in a, dis a traveling distance of uh, one hour, they should be able to reach the office in one hour. Okay. Now I'm not commenting on this. That's uh, that's we can debate on that whether 100 Mbps is enough or 50 is enough. But there is a 
something like this is readily available and when you come away from that setup it it's like air it's like mm-hmm. oxygen it's there but we don't realize it mm-hmm. and most of the enterprises have redundant networks at least two to right. three of them okay right. that's not too obvious when you are uh, working it looks like you just use one network cable but usually there is yeah. two to three service providers at least two equal bandwidth one half bandwidth kind of uh, redundancies in the network itself that is built in um there itself if you look at it uh, wifi is good but it's still not that much it depends on what you're trying to do like there are times when we switch to the network cable still probably 25% of the time you prefer to switch to a network cable because you want bandwidth okay and this was actually an interesting case where uh, when they lot of laptops now don't have an ethernet port <laughs> yes of course they don't right um, so in the office you had the adapter or the dock which is there Yes. and uh, when you move out that's not there anymore that's one yeah, thing. you need to have a dongle you need to have a dongle with the usb to ethernet to... yes yes and the, the other side is there people use uh, i mean like i would say around 70 60 to 70% of enterprises still use a desktop and a desktop doesn't have a wifi in it yeah so i'm slowly coming over to the client actual working machine itself so if you just transition slowly now across the network into the uh, desktops uh now we have a plethora of devices again it can be anything from your uh desktop to a laptop to a mobile and then within laptop there's a business laptop there's a home laptop and uh, all these things will get really uh tested and checked but it's a uh, it's a tough thing um and especially when so what is things so so you have say you mentioned network right network definitely is not going anywhere from the enterprise because no matter if you do not have even server you still need to connect to to the cloud right and you need to communicate uh, internally within the organization you need to have devices talk to each other so network definitely is going to be there for a long time and it is going to continue to going uh, to get evolved it is going to get uh, better it is going to get more redundancy more reliability today most of the time you don't even think about network because it is it is earlier means almost 10 years ago network used to be very unreliable right so today it has become like electricity so it, it is you expect that if you have a if you have a ethernet cable uh, anywhere you connect it to uh, any, any device it should give you an ip address and if you have the right credentials you will get a wifi uh, ip address right so it it seems like almost uh, uh, ubiquitous without any uh, without any uh, issues more often than not so it has become like the plumbing uh of the of of the organization it's like in the house plumbing you only worry about when it breaks down right otherwise plumbing is just there it is reliable right right so so the elect, the, the network is going to be around so so what so other devices what are the other devices which are going to stay in stay on on premises in the in the enterprise which the enterprise will would want to own before i i think before we go to other devices right i think mm-hmm. uh nishan and i think this covid kind of helps us bring out that hidden oxygen to server so nishan in your experience right like um what infrastructure did you miss when working from home let's put it that way it might be i mean like i work most of the time from home so i'm not really qualified to answer this question especially and it's been like 6 years since i've been in an enterprise network So Nishan, maybe you can uh, tell me how did it? Uh, uh, you have been a typical user, right? Like, how did it matter to you? Did you miss anything in the office? Yeah, in the current scenario, uh, definitely one thing I am really missing is my office desktop, because in okay. our office we are working on desktop, and 
we are in a transition or just started to i think the reason is also again this the covid situation like uh, the companies are all, are all looking for an uh, it, it may not be 100% work from home post covid case but they are thinking like an 80 20 kind of thing like 80% might be work from office and 20% be from work from home so okay. they are in a transition phase to change all the stuff to laptop So, in, so the, the main missing factor in my case is my office desktop because that come the the whole office setup uh, with working with a desktop is completely different. Uh, that's what my view when we uh, even from an ergonomics point of view also laptop is not having that much. I mean, from a health health wise also. the laptop is not that much comfortable when compared to a desktop if, if we have the similar office setup in our home then it's fine to work from office also so when you say similar setup it means a uh, uh, big screen and a keyboard yeah, yeah, and a mouse right and a, yes. and a proper sitting table uh, yes. just like office right yeah. so um to so basically i guess so let me kind of show this thing quick thing over here right how it looks like so for me if you look at it right uh, i guess nishan maybe you met something like this so for me this is my working setup okay i have my keyboard i have my mouse i have a laptop and i have a, a large screen here and recently i was telling you guys right based on that i had to get a, a touch screen to make the big screen work so i guess when you mean desktop what you mean is that this kind of a setup where you have a yeah uh, this kind of setup it itself is fine because when, when we say the store means uh, we should get that office feeling or uh, yeah. i am mainly looking not from an office feeling i am mainly looking from the whole uh, ergon- ergonomics point of view because we should ha- have a proper office chair as the La- laptop have, you become like this you crouch ah correct. okay because that 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 is causing severe problem now uh, on our neck and all because neck pain is one of how the main how about the compute ergonomics is one how about the compute uh, in terms of like see um, horsepower of the <laughs> yeah so yeah. like for example um i was looking for a laptop okay and i do some heavy duty work there just if i want to increase a 8 gb ram the price of the laptop goes up by around 30k correct okay and the biggest problem is this i cannot upgrade even if i want to there's just two slots there and it's already filled up yeah there's no way yeah. i can go beyond 16 gb on the laptop if i need something else then it goes into a even higher range right it's like literally troubles for every uh, ram that you want to in, uh, increase but on a desktop you have much more uh, flexible correct, correct because and uh, uh, that this that was my second point like the from uh, compute or the infra fast infra addition point of view actually desktop is more comfortable like uh especially when we uh, I, I, and uh, when we have a desktop with a with a decent spec then uh, the second thing actually we need to try we whenever we we sh- actually we should uh, try we to build a distributed environment within a desktop itself like uh, multiple virtual okay. boxes and those kind of things because from an, uh, the one of the main issues that we used to face is like we always think about even while develop a software we always think about like uh, running the software as a standalone application one of the machine how this distribution across multiple uh, servers when it is deployed in an external environment like customer pre prod or production there definitely we will have multiple service and all correct 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 but when we develop the things actually we only have the provision to run in a single machine mm we are not actually uh, actually seeing how it is going to behave behave in a distributed environment mm that, that is the actual environment where it is finally going to run and the customer is going to access from such an environment correct so even for a desktop or a hardware scenario we should have a uh distribute kind of things or uh, using the virtual box and all mm. and mm. and the development should be in 
in such a background or such an environment and that should be and if, if that would be more good if we have that virtual environment everything in a dinas kind of things but okay Running so word so if you want a virtual environment that significantly in, increases the Correct. firepower needed on that uh, hardware laptop. hardware that, yeah, um, which means that demands eventually when you say demand, decent spec i'm just curious uh, it's of course a dev- what do you mean by a decent spec for your yeah, decent spec uh, yeah decent spec so what i meant is like uh, uh, as i said gb ram <laughs> yeah correct <laughs> if if i have to build uh, build or set up a uh, desktop or a machine which is having this uh, this n number of partitions for say one partition for a windows for our day to day activities another partition os partition for some uh, the other os like linux or ubuntu ubuntu and if i have to set up this kind of distributor platform within that hardware itself and each one each one should have associated with some kind of memory and all correct so uh, if we are look, really looking for such kind of an environment in our desktop itself in our office or in our in as our as, as our working environment or as our development environment then uh, the memory computation power everything should be much more or uh, somewhat higher than the normal spec that we really need mm. so this this seems like a, a, a sort of a ideal use case for for the cloud right where today means if i i was thinking of uh, if i need horsepower where do i go all i need is a virtual desktop i can the horsepower could run anywhere right so today if uh, uh, if i need a ubuntu machine if i need a, another windows server or anything i just spin up a vm somewhere and it say i i just need a in fact means if we're talking about hardware the the decent spec thing today you can stream games to your desktop right like high powered games you talk about google stadia or microsoft x cloud right they are streaming very uh, high latency sensitive games to right to your mobile phone forget about uh, a desktop or forget about a, a a big device you can play it on your ipad in a browser you can play it on uh, uh, a low powered pc uh, you can play it on a tablet of yeah. some kind so so i think that requirement which nishant has there's a, there's lot of alternatives available today to I, meet that I, requirement i i have a com- uh different completely different perspective deepak mm-hmm. okay so i would straight away okay arrogantly discuss dismiss what you are telling okay <laughs> okay uh, okay um why the reason is this um let's say you take you want to stream into a ipad kind of a thing or any mm-hmm. devices right now we are talking about mobile devices with 16 gb ram just like that not a big deal okay and uh high power gpu graphics on them mm-hmm. now it desktops for a look at a office person a typical banking manager banking mm-hmm. clerk they don't have that kind of a configuration on their uh desktops or yes. laptops for that matter okay yes and we haven't reached a stage where we have become comfortable using a mobile or a tablet and it's still not come into the enterprise and i think it's going to take another 10 years easily before mm-hmm. that becomes ubiquitous usage uh, stuff so it's going to be a laptop or it's going to be a desktop okay mm-hmm. and the moment you kind of say this the cost of the desktop nearly doubles Mm. okay and not only that uh, the operational aspect right uh, servicing breaking down that that thing is another problem with hardware mm-hmm. okay so that's one part of it next is we are actually looking at uh, this is a real scenario and we were trying to roll out automation for a large co- company okay and we were telling they are finding it a problem to install they are finding it a problem to install i mean like they've been struggling for around 2 3 weeks and you say what's the problem in, in installing a rpa tool after that i realized they are running windows 7 okay the rpa tool works on windows 10 only is it yeah it works only in windows 10 
I mean, like there are a lot of dependent components, like .NET Framework components. There are Office mm-hmm. kind of things. Like if you take Windows Seven, uh, even Excel's advanced features won't work. Right. Okay, because it depends something on the OS. Mm-hmm. Now, um, so I was talking with Sukumar, uh, who used mm-hmm. to be CIO of Cognizant, right? He said, you know, we used to think of having a thin client VDI kind of a thing. For these scenarios. those things simply won't work you cannot do vdi you need because they are using multiple app i'm using uh, an app from there and i'm using an app from here they are from two different location right two different things and i want to do something on my own laptop if it's pure vdi then if you go to pure vdi right mm-hmm. then you start depending on the network you need good network yes okay and you need a good rendering stuff so it's a uh, it's not that thing like you can take the vdi or the thin client approach and in fact like it's a kind of mixture there is a lot of dependency on the hardware for these thin clients to work like even if we share on zoom right there is something called share sound and optimize so there is an option which takes care of it it uses a gpu on your laptop i cannot have a raspberry pi and have the same experience of zoom no, no i i didn't i didn't mean that we don't have to have any kind of uh, hardware there so, so uh, what i'm saying is okay the specific requirements which dishant has of as a developer right as a developer oh, okay. as a developer uh, you need to uh, spin up multiple vms and do this distributed environment kind of a testing that requirement can easily be satisfied by by uh, because I, i don't i like i have tried i have a azure vms right and mm-hmm. i tried doing that uh when you work long time and you want to do stuff really quickly right you want it on that your half a second lag there is a half a left second lag now it doesn't look too much but when you're really doing stuff it does get irritating like i'm typing something right and i just want to change code and hit compile that half mm-hmm. a second lag between every action adds up and it does get a create a frustration i i i can relate to that is i i i can relate to that because i had a, 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 a very low end ubuntu vm running on azure and uh, i was running some uh, so i had i had scheduled it to run from 9:15 to 4 4 pm so, sort of thing is i don't really need this thing because i need it only for specific time so but i wanted to troubleshoot it after 4 pm right and exactly because it was shutting down it was shutting down shutting down and, and it is saying deallocating deallocating for 15 minutes i am waiting for it to deallocate right and, I, and then as finally i said <coughs> finally i started troubleshooting i said why is it deallocating for the last 15 minutes so sir i said somebody has already answered that question he says sometimes it take it can take up to 90 minutes relax <laughs> so so, <laughs> so, so, uh, so i can relate to that this yes sometimes when you really want to see uh, and troubleshoot things you really want to have that horsepower on your desktop which nishant is mentioning there okay i want to do something quickly i want to run a compiler i want to run my testing locally uh, i i don't want to depend on a vm which is far away which may or may not be controlled uh, uh, but shooting down my own case right i yeah. would also say this is probably 2% of the enterprise entire it population like 2% will be the developers who are already there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so uh, those two percent will have this constraint but others i think there are other thick uh, applications which is like for example you need a beefy browser to run mm-hmm. see that streaming example that you said i cannot have it on a, a machine which has 4 gb it still won't even if i have a groom extension or something so um, then then the other thing on the hardware itself right what kind of hardware to uh, use obviously i i hate to admit it but um, max definitely are much more sustaining than uh, windows uh, laptops i've seen so far all these years of experience right you get a mac top it easily runs for 5 to 6 years same whole is good for an iphone and an iphone i've learned it with my experience hp or 
I have experience with HP, Surface, Lenovo, Dell. These are direct experiences. It's like there's something plugged into it. Like after two and a half years, that fellow will start behaving like erratically, right? If you're lucky, you will get a five, six year. Otherwise, it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm too finicky. I mean, there are, I've heard people no, who are saying see, I've been using your, it. For- your, exp- your experience is actually, is true, actually. It is true. And and uh, I, I'm, I'm for, for, for the record, I'm, really use, uh, I'm using a Lenovo machine, which is more than five years old, and it's still running, and it, I'm I'm still able to do this uh, video on on top of it and run two screens. Right? And it's got it's not a very high end machine. It's got only eight GB of RAM, and right? it still runs. And it in fact it runs better than some of the newer <laughs> devices which I have lying around. So you you're right. So, some of the uh, a Mac hardware actually lasts very long. And for a very long time when uh, uh, Mac uh, uh, Mac devices used to run uh, on Intel, which they have stopped doing recently, they used to be says the best Windows machine is a Mac, right? So people used to uh, run Windows on top of uh, a Mac, Mac. Because, because it would let, let you do that until they blocked it some time ago. So, so they- Oh, I didn't know that. Have they? No, you can't they, do uh, that, they, you, that you, dual boot kind no, of. No, the, the, I think the the new ones, the M1 Max, uh, M1 chip Max, you cannot run Windows on it yet. But uh, I'm sure because that actually is is another direction which we can talk about, which is how uh, we have moved from that x86 to now this ARM based uh, hardware, right? Uh, which is even 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 Microsoft is trying to do that. They brought in that. Uh, surface X, right, which is an ARM based uh, uh, surface. And, and now all the Macs, the newer Macs are going to run on an ARM based architecture, right? And, and, and so this is actually a, one of the things which, uh, which Apple has done in the, in the past, right? So they have, I have, I have, uh, I have been an Apple user ever since uh, uh, they had the first iMac. Right, so uh, and they have moved from the power PC to Intel to now to this ARM-based uh, uh, architecture, and and they are actually they are the people who uh, that is they are the people who will say who cares about legacy? We are just going to get rid of the legacy. If you want to run something newer and uh, better, you you just have to change uh, to to what what we are going to offer you now. Right. So, so this and they, they actually. So, whereas the reverse is true for for the Microsoft world, the, the Windows world, right? So, even today, if you have a DOS-based application written 20 years ago, it is very likely that you will still be able to run in on Windows 10. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's kind so, of funny in that organization we were talking. Yeah. And there are still programs which they run with uh, DOS. And it's a kind of healthcare claims, insurance, those kind of organizations. I, I mean, like they still have DOS programs running or batch kind of a thing, which are DOS. Yes. Right. <laughs> I mean, a, a batch batch file uh, dot bat is uh, as old as uh, DOS itself, right? And 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 Correct. it is still being still being used in the same way. And most of the commands actually remain. Very same what I learned 25 years ago, <laughs> right? So how old how, how old are your uh, desktops and laptops, Nishant? Or what is the life cycle in your organization? Is like three years, four years? How does that work? Refresh or make it work till somebody complains or that system dies? I think we have been spoiled in uh, Microsoft Deepak. Like every three <laughs> years, by default, you get a refresh kind of a thing, right? Uh, uh, Nishant, how does it work for you guys? Yeah, in, uh, in our case, actually, this uh, desktop or the desktop upgrade or replacement actually happened uh, as part of the necessity because when we ha- when we had the requirement to run or upgrade our machine from an f- earlier 4 GB to an 8 GB or 12 GB and mm. That was one of the key uh, reasons for upgrading our, our desktop to, higher, you know, to a higher spec. And as part of that, actually, I assume that is one of the reasons. And as part of that, they actually changed all the desktop to a new one. And uh, I think the whole setup has changed, including the monitor. 
but okay. there is no specific frequency on how uh, how frequent they will change or uh, this or update. basically so, project yes, demand project, project demand, demand, and, project demand. Uh, correct yeah purely yeah. based on project uh, okay. yeah that that's actually uh, uh, nowadays yeah i mean i think that the i am i'm just, we're just looking at the at the future and uh, from the future perspective what i see uh, the devices which will continue to exist you kumaran you already said that it will take a decade for the desktops to disappear right so yeah, yeah. which i believe which is true but for more and more for uh, individual productivity it's going to be uh, some of these uh, uh devices where where you do not have you just have enough horsepower to run something uh which is locally required but if you need anything uh anything which requires more horsepower it is just going to be just going to be streamed to you in the next 5 years it's 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 most most likely that it uh, the application which requires more horsepower is just going to be streamed to you 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 may not it may not appear like a virtual desktop but is actually you have seen this technology before right so we have seen this technology where the application is actually running across somewhere but uh, you only see uh, it appears as if it is a local application right so those that streaming kind of application technology exists uh, and and that is going to become uh, more ubiquitous uh, as the network bandwidth available to the cloud increases previously the the big big uh, thing which held back this kind of implementation was all the horsepower that you need to have in your own data center right in your own data center if you were to do uh, a citrix based uh, virtual desktop or uh, zendesk or I, I i mean there's so many so many uh, uh, options available so that required huge amount of investment from uh, from an enterprise to make an in their data center with all these features coming directly from the cloud there may be more uh, options for the enterprises to look at doing this thing remotely and have these this virtual desktop kind of uh, uh features available to their for their applications themselves right so that that is that is what i see as as happening uh, of course there are other devices which need to be there in the enterprise for all these things to happen what what do you think kumar i think um it would we just it's kind of hard i mean i'm not able to visualize a non it kind of an org like let's say uh, uh take a bank 30 30 bank yeah 30 30 percent branch right 30 user branch yeah. there are i mean those, there are people who are still using xp man yes yes this is just think I mean, just think about it the people who are using xp on a very low end machine yeah instead of instead of upgrading that machine we just upgrade them to a browser which can connect to a, a decent machine in the cloud mm right so that way the the hardware cost remains low to non existence plus it brings uh, more resilience to to the branch also right it says if something happens to this machine just throw it out your nothing goes bad because this is just an so th- correct so in some ways it is bringing that whole thin client culture back but the thin clients never used to work because enterprises never had enough horsepower to to run that thin client which now is available with the cloud i think then that then it comes that you have to get the network right yes so, that, so, so right that that is the the biggest piece of hardware which needs to be fixed in the in the enterprise and and, and i think there are means a lot of people think that we, we have discussed do in our initial uh, episodes also was around what jobs will remain and i believe network and network uh, management is going to be a very big deal for the enterprises uh, going going forward what do you think without doubt nishant I'll, 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 I'll yeah, yeah, just, just one, one, just one point. Like uh, as Kumar said, this non-IT organization is still still running with uh, this, like, especially bank and all. 
running with windows sp so uh, from that point actually i was thinking what should be the uh, the driving factor for us to upgrade our hardware or you know, whatever whether so, it is company Prishan, or in your case right you would have also seen your uh... Uh, customers in the transportation space, right? The actual users, the warehouses, yeah. the back-end offices. What kind of hardware issues have you encountered when you roll out your solution? I'm sure you would have run into stuff like that. Like I remember okay. in one of the yeah. cases, like there is one part of the office, Wi-Fi doesn't come and the customer said, no, we can't get you Wi-Fi. You make your application as a... Uh, store and use kind of a thing caching kind of a thing over a days period right so uh, and this yeah. is not this is not some third world country this is a developed country and developed uh, airport infrastructure <laughs> ah so in that scenario that thing was there yeah in uh, in our case uh, the hardware issues used to occur because we are you used to deal with the peripheral kind of things like the printers and you know the like when we go to the airport we have the so many other hardware things like in the uh, the boarding bus printer backpack printer and uh, and the scanner those kind of things so the one of the major challenge we used to face with the hardware or hardware kind of stuff or the issues with hardware or even we are uh, we are struggling so much to debug or troubleshoot an issue whether it is really an issue with our software or an issue with the hardware is actually the scenario where we are mostly dealing with is this peripheral kind of things the airport peripheral like uh, this uh, uh bus printer backpack printer the scanner and the, the gate reader the automatic gate reader those kind of those are always the, those those things are always a pain point for us as part of any implementation because uh, if what will be the implementations uh, the the peripheral kind of things is always vary based on airports the airport infra is aligned to that so one of the first things that you will go when you work home is you you will have a printer problem <laughs> 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 i think i've reached a stage where if a printer has a small problem working rather than fixing it or even to the extent if the cartridge doesn't print properly instead of spending my time trying to get a different cartridge and make it work take the printer throw it buy a new printer is much more <laughs> effective <laughs> Well, i think there's a what nishan mentioned there's a huge number of other issues which are which are going to prop up with the with the new kind of hardware that will be required right now uh, once printing goes away at the airports there will be rfid tags things like that right so again hardware at the end has to be has to be fixed to right. for for his applications to work nishan you want to say something yeah one thing actually when when you guys are talking one thing i was thinking is like once we invested to set up a data center or own data center and later actually uh, uh, we thought like running with our own data center is actually not that beneficial when compared to or from a scalability aspect to run in a cloud data center or a, so i'm thinking once we migrate all our uh, servers or all our you know, customers running in own data center to a cloud platform what will be going to do with our on prem investment <laughs> have you encountered uh, have you yes. so this is actually a very common problem this is actually a very common problem so that's why most organization what they do is they will they will uh, they they will let it run out its warranty so that's what they do so if the uh, if the data center uh, equipment is going to run out of warranty then they start moving to the cloud so so that's that's, that's the transition point uh, uh, if you want to choose a date that is what the date they say they okay this is the date when all our equipment or this at least part of this equipment is going to run out of warranty let us start moving to the cloud so that we don't invest any more in it so once it is out of warranty and of course they the all all enterprises have a depreciation uh, of an asset right so 
once the book value becomes zero then it is just uh, equipment which they can either sell off uh, for some value or uh, keep it running run tests on it all kinds of things they can do so that is the usual strategy which i have seen anything else which you have seen kumaran uh no i think uh, that's yeah pretty much it's yeah. like that okay or are the yeah the other thing is the current hardware doesn't support the load yes yes yeah means if if of the load if you have to buy new stuff obviously then you have to think of going to the cloud but i yeah. think the other thing i guess nishant your question is like uh, after the hardware is over what do they do with it i actually don't know where do these servers go what do they do with them yeah that's what that was uh, i don't know i actually don't know <laughs> so 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 they 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 can be sent for recycling also by the way right so they can okay. be sent for recycling also so so lot, lot of organizations now buy back their own hardware for recycling right so for example uh, uh but then, and now i then, remember there was one uh, i think in uh, was it in microsoft yeah i think it's microsoft only they offered to give us servers so they gave the track servers to employees they yeah. even just we had it, it we had a lot of them we actually had a lot of them yeah. lying around uh, in all of our offices right i have seen in chennai i have seen in bangalore we used to have these couple of servers we say their uh, people will just uh, ah, rdp into correct. it and they say let me run my uh, vm on this right so exactly what nishant is doing or wants to do on his desktop we were doing it because that time we did not have access to azure right? so that was that was long time back where uh, we did not have access to creating our own vms this is ever since that has been available those things have been taken away uh so so I, the hardware part actually has become uh, uh, although it appears i think the conclusion of our discussion is that hardware is not going anywhere it is just changing shape and form and the things which were uh, important have become even more important like the network right like uh, how, how we are able to connect to from thin devices to something in the cloud or uh, even hardware which was always anyway important for things like uh, scanning and and printing and all those things will still still be around and some of the things may change shape and my gut feel is i don't think the it spend on hardware is going to come in. on what product you spend might change but it hardware spend percentage will continue to remain the same is my gut feel i so, so you are saying that the hardware will become more expensive or the hardware will because they don't spend that because buying hardware is mostly capex it will right? remain the same yeah, it, it is, won't yeah, come because down yeah because it is capex right now the capex for the data center has gone down so where is that that's capex going to go because that capex is right. become I, I guess that now. will that will kind of move to a better in network infrastructure better device better mm -hmm. for example i think uh if we have to work remotely you need to have a better camera better mic and um i mean like for a house like mine okay mm -hmm. i have two 40 140 and wide 80 mbps data pipes yes okay and the uh, so there is one for the entire house and one for uh, me my family keeps mm -hmm. you are selfish fellow <laughs> so the family is one Mm -hmm. i've used a wifi extender to get it to my workplace mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so when the main network goes i switch to that wifi network mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i've built in that redundancy so that there's that additional wifi repeater and that two things which i have built up this is in the house right but in work also you would have similar things is what i'm trying to you know what you should do actually this is i'll, I'll tell you my personal experience this is uh, something which i do for my hardware at home so i also have i also have uh, two internet connections but i i don't have two networks so the so it all comes through a single wifi network but i can choose which ethernet which uh, uh, internet provider i'm going out on 
right so i either i can do it automatically or i can do it uh, uh, through through manual routing right so, so you I got a special router for that is it yeah I, I got a, a load balancer so this load is actually not ah, very okay. expensive so the load balancer uh, is not very expensive this small it looks like a small modem only right it's a small modem with the you just two, three... you just gave me evidence of where you will spend more on hardware <laughs> yes 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 so actually in fact means so I, the... at one point i was thinking that i need to have three internet providers right and it, that 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 load balancer actually yeah, provides that is. option Actually, yes. I have four. Oh, yeah, I mean, two the, on them. The wireless one ones are one, in the... I have got two phones, so the two <laughs> Wi-Fi is four networks. Yes. Yeah, so, so the question from Deepak to Kumaran is like, where that capex will go? I think we already answered that. Because... Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is where the capex Actually, will go. We, we... <laughs> Capex will definitely go in from because uh, when we have this uh, distributed kind of things, we will invest more on the network side. Yes. Right. And now with the uh, now uh, even the satellite based inter- internet is going to be available. Even Airtel, Airtel is in that business. Huh? Airtel has bought just bought one company which is going to give satellite based internet. Uh, uh, the low Earth orbit satellite, right? Yeah, so they yeah. are going. To, they are going to give and that. I mean, I saw some videos are of uh, how much speed they are getting, and sometimes the speed is much better than. Uh, what we are getting on the uh, fiber optic coming to our uh, our house but i think that those things will really make some of the remote areas uh, much more accessible via internet and once these services become more uh, e- easily available right? let's just close by me telling technology giving us nirvana will be an illusion which we will save which we will chase till we die <laughs> uh, yes no in fact in fact it, i think the 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 final nirvana is going to be when we upload ourselves into the cloud <laughs> right <laughs> right so the, our isn't that called death isn't that uh, called yes, death that, that, <laughs> so there, there, there will be no more death there will be no more death it is going to be you are just going to upload yourself into the cloud <laughs> no more death <laughs> all right so thank you everyone this is a this was a enlightening discussion and we figured out that hardware is not going anywhere it is just that we are we are going to spend the same amount of money the same amount of effort the in fact the 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 in fact maybe the, the number of jobs related to hardware in the enterprise are also not going to be